Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. And tip top of the evening, everybody, and welcome to Sports Final. Your excuse to stay home, get under an Afghan, and not brave the cold for basketball tonight. Although I gotta tell you, the games were well worth the shiver factor, and it was plentiful out there tonight. Our man Will Wilson will be along shortly with all your Southeast Iowa fireworks tonight. They were plenty as well. And I've got a dandy to show you from the Flower City, but let's start tonight with Mission Impossible. The Quincy High Blue Devils at sixth ranked Rock Island started off well enough for Quincy High. First half played fairly well. Third quarter scored just seven points, and that proved to be Quincy High School's undoing in this ballgame. Lincoln Elby, the closest thing to a double digit score the Blue Devils had against sixth rank Rocky tonight. Final count 56 to 43. That's Quincy High School now falls to two and two on the season. Tell you what, Rock Island. Formidable Quincy High School now also 0 and 1 on the season in Western Big Six play. I talked about Palmyra and Canton. The big game tonight from the Flower City Brock Butler and company trying to beat the number four ranked team in the state. Oh, and what a great atmosphere! Couldn't find a seat in the house tonight in Palmyra early on. Oh, this is good stuff right here. Josh Holtz with the miss, but Basil Keller's there to knock that in and put home the offensive rebound. Canton would answer. Canton got off to the hot start in this one. Tyler Neiman with a kind of fallaway action at the other end. Trevor Many doing Trevor Many things to kind of answer, but it would be this long three right here from the big fella Gabe McKenzie that put up Canton 13 to 8, and then Brock Butler started going nuts. And I mean really nuts from long distance range. Back to back threes here give Palmyra as much as a nine point lead. Canton not giving any ground in this one. The smooth fadeaway right there from Tyler Neiman in answer. Brock Butler though answering back. Trading threes for twos. Never a good proposition. Brock Butler with six triples in all in the first half. 20 points in the first half as well. And just before the half Brock gives one up. And at the other end of things that's Josh Holtz knocking down the three to end the first half. And as you can see, their nice little lead for Palmyra into the half. Third quarter, though, belonged to the Canton Tigers. Gabe McKenzie, who had 23 points in the night, good stuff for him. Then Tyler Neiman on the run out right here. He's going to do it all himself. Canton ends the third quarter with a one-point lead. I told you all about Canton in the third. The fourth quarter, kind of a back-and-forth affair until this dagger comes right here, courtesy of Caleb Kaiser. He's not just for football anymore. Jordan Nutt kind of putting things away with a nice interior move with a minute left. Palmyra gets a nice victory tonight. Hands Canton their first loss of the season. 66-64. 66-60 is your final, I should say. 26 points on the night for Brock Butler in the win. Gabe McKenzie with 23. I'll tell you what, North Shelby, we talked about it earlier. Really good Class 1 team. They beat South Shelby tonight through the Raiders 53-40. to Todd Kripes kind of got it going on just a little bit right now. Also scored just called in Marion County, a winner over Mark Twain. Ethan Anderson with 26 points in a losing cause for the Tigers. We've got Monroe City taking care of business. Very balanced attack in a victory over the Coyotes of Paris by 30-58-28. to And your shocker score of the night in a good way. Ellsbury, a winner over Troy, 62-51. to Look at the stat line from 6 foot eight. Kenny Leslie, 36 points, 14 ribs. Pretty darn good night at the office. Let's take you to some Illinois action tonight. Payson Seymour actually trekking across the river. We've got a cross river battle tonight with the Highland Cougars. Tell you what, Highland got off to a pretty good start on the home digs in this one as well. Payson sort of aided things a little loose early with the basketball. Cody Wilkins going to take advantage and get the easiest bunny of his life at the other end. There's two for him. Payson trying to get things back in motion in this game. This is Lance Bulug eventually working the, the fun give-and-go action to Hunter Flessner up and in to tie the score up at two at that point. Highland, though, would answer back in this one. Some nice creating going on right here by Johnny Goins. Going to feed down low to Austin Richmiller. He's going to get the kiss off glass. Highland with the early lead. Palmyra would have none of it from that point forward. It would be first gauge Klitz with a nice take right there. And then it's going to develop into the Cody Hildebrand show. No big surprise right there. Ended up with 33 points on the night. Started with a three that got him going right here. That's just a textbook Cody Hildebrand move. More on the long distance run. Lance Bulig, the deep touchdown pass to Mr. Hildebrand, who knocks that home for the nice score as well. More to come in this one. You can't leave this kid wide open. He's a player of the year, an all-stater, and that's a three-pointer with the bank to go as well. Tell you what, it wasn't all just the, uh, the offense tonight or the scoring, I should say, for Cody Hildebrand. 
He can play assist as well, but this is a pretty assist right there from Dalton Edwards who feeds Hildebrand. Hildebrand going to return the favor right here coming up to Carter Epperson. Payson Seymour gets the win in this one and ends up winning going away by 30. 70 to 40 is your final on the night. Illinois scores to pass along to you tonight. Camp Point Central falls at Monroe's 56 to 37 was your final in that game. McComb is just for real, kids. Blake Louderman, another huge night, 26 points in a win at home. A rematch of that game from last Saturday, kind of the same result as McComb lays down a whooping tonight. Rushville Industry continues the woes of Bushnell Prairie City, 61-43. Big night in West Central. Sorry we missed it tonight, kids. We wanted to come for the Coach Sager tribute, but we were flat out of staff tonight, real short staffed. West Central, though, gets a big win to pay honor to their fallen, the late great coach, the assistant coach. 55-37, your final tonight. Austin Bays with 13 in that one. Griggsville Perry, a winner tonight, 67-57 over Western. Joseph Myers with 14 points in that ball game. And our man Alex Blickan with a dunk and eight points as Unity knocks off Biggsville, 66-34, your final there. How about the Palmyra girls? They, too, unbeaten. So is can tonight. Battle of 3-0 and teams in this one, and it was a pretty good battle of teams in this one. We'll start you off with some Lexi Lawson doing Lexi Lawson type things. Power move to the hole. Gets the kiss off glass. Her team leading and about to be leading by more. Katie Hinkle from long distance. She knocks down a three. Canton, though, much improved. They're not going to go away, and they're certainly not intimidated by the challenge. Pretty give-and-go action right here from Brittany Bearhorst to Bailey Hoeing to finish up. And then Allison Phillips, who's been really improved, really good, and really solid and the low blocks in the early going, you see why here. A little slip move for her. She gets free, knocks down the bucket. Palmyra going to take care of its business and attend it from there. Haley Nix puts the Nix to things, so to speak, with a beautiful bucket. More Lexi Lawson, who had a big night as well, scoring a plenty for the Palmyra Lady Panthers as they end up getting the victory in this one. 72-48 was your final on this one as Palmyra improves. I believe now it's 4-0 and on the season for Chris Parsons' crew. Elsewhere on the Missouri girls' docket on this evening, North Shelby, a thriller over South. 41-40, your final Abby Rich with 23 points, including the game winner virtually at the buzzer tonight as North Shelby gets a quality win over South. Also, Mark Twain, speaking of quality wins, knocks off Marion County 44-43. Kenzie Grossman with 16 points and 10 rebounds in that ball game. The Paris girls too much for Monroe City winning tonight. 44-30 to was your final in that ballgame. Quincy Notre Dame, a rare Friday night girls contest, taking on Pleasant Plains. Different night, same result. Erica Obert leading the fast break, and eventually the jumper would fall down for her. Then it's Cassidy Foley working it as well. Off the mark with the three, but Kristen Gengenbacher had another big night. In fact, she had 24 points, five assists, and an offensive rebound and put back right there. QD's press doing what QD's press does, rattling planes. It's an easy turnover for Mary Beth Hugenberg, who's going to go underneath, hit the two, bucket, band aid, three point play for her. More good ball movement right here. It's just typical Quincy Notre Dame stuff. Got to love watching these girls play. Nice finish for Kristen, who had the 24 points tonight. QND wins big in this one. Yet again, no surprise there. 65 to 30 was your final. I'm going to wrap up with some scores here and then pass it over to Will Wilson. Let's give you the rest of the Illinois girls docket tonight. Just two on a rather limited docket right there as the Unity girls win big 53 to 35 over West Prairie. Also tonight, Brown County gets another, well, what else, dominant night from Vanessa Marker, the future Bradley Lady Brave, 53-47 is your final on that one. And now with the best of Southeast Iowa, out Southeast Iowa, easy for me to say, here's Will. Packed house right now to see both of these squads. Miles Wensing going to get us started with a nice spin right here. Beautiful jumper to put Fort Madison up early. Then it's Wensing again with a little dribble crossover and step back jumper as he buries it right there. Kia Cook would answer though. Drake Ryder is going to feed Brand Ames for the bucket in the foul. Then it's going to be one scene again, finding Billy Coppage for the wide open three. He'll make that all day. We didn't get a called in score for this one, so let's take you to the other one just down the street. We would like to go to Holy Trinity, right? All right, Colin Kastmeyer going to start things off, find Blake Hellwood for the easy lay in right there. He'll make that all day as well. Then it's Hellwood again. He'll take the steal. He's going to take it the length of the court. Tough lay in right there. Holy Trinity Catholic going to be up big early. Then Kassmeyer, jumper right there. Hits, he's going to hit the baseline. Roger Iyer is going to try to keep it stay, keep try to stay close in this one, but they're just going to fall behind too early. Is New Cooper going to go way to the hoop here? Holy Trinity wins this, 67-39. Here, let's give you a girl score quickly. Now let's head on over to those girls' highlights from Fort Madison and Keokuk Will. Back to the hound dumb we go as the girls got things started here. Kelsey Walters starts Keokuk off right with a deep three right there. 
Then it's going to be Lake and Bolts running the floor. She's going to steal. Find Paige Kavon is going to lay it in. Then right here for Fort Madison, Jordan Miroto is going to down low, up close and personal right there. She's going to hit the nice lay in. Then it's going to be Bolts again. She was fun to watch tonight. Driving to the hoop. Nice little lay in right there. Then Miroto is going to be under the hoop again. She's going to get it down low. She finished from there. Kia Cook would win 42-39. All right, thanks, Will. A couple of scores to pass along in Donaldson tonight. Central League boys, losers to Danville. Central League girls are victorious. We'll see you coming up. No overtime this week, but we'll have all your scores for you coming up tomorrow night on the big website. Check it out, including your football companion.